Yeah, the big idea in the mission of Smartling is we have accepted the audacious mission of trying to make the entire internet truly multilingual. So we want to make sure that whether you have a website, a web application, a mobile app, any digital content, that you can provide that in multiple languages. And the important thing is language is one of the last true barriers on the web. It's not dial-up access or broadband. It's not browser wars. It's language. And as the rest of the world comes online, it's really important that businesses are offering a multilingual experience for all of their audience members. And I guess our view at Smartling is that Five years from now, having an English-only website is going to feel about as dumb as not having a website at all. What I love about Smartling is we're solving a very, very big problem. I mean, it's an audacious problem, and it's a math problem. It's how do you enable translation for any content out there? And that's not just as simple as hello equals hola. This is a very significant software and technology problem. And it's one that we've tackled and that we've really embraced. The ability to drop in a software service for any application out there and enable a low cost, some cases free, translation is a really important part of what we're doing. And I'm excited about that. So my brief background is I've got a computer engineering undergrad from Penn. I also spent a decent amount of time working in linguistics while I was there. And I was always intrigued by software and, and language and linguistics and how they would come together. I also grew up in a military family, and I spent nine years as a pilot in the military myself. So I've lived all around the world. I've spent a quarter of my life living and working outside of the US. So I'm familiar with the fact that language and culture is important around, uh, around the world. And this SmartLing was really an opportunity for me to bring all of these passions together, travel, culture, computer engineering, and language. One of the things that I, that I think I bring to the company from my military experience is this concept of commander's intent which is this idea of set broad overall goals. What do you want to achieve? Make sure that they're broad enough that everybody can participate in it. Everybody understands it clearly. We've got three of them. Anybody here could rattle them off very easily. But then give everybody an opportunity to do the things that they need to do to make sure that everything is lined up to achieve specific objectives that support those overall goals. And what I do is I say, look, I'm concerned about hitting those goals. I know there's a number of objectives, and I know that there's things that you need to do to make that happen, but I'm not going to mandate exactly how you do your job in order to achieve that. Everybody knows where, what we're marching towards, and everybody knows what role they're going to play as, as, as a part of that. I think that's um, a pretty good way to motivate people, because they know that what they're doing has an impact at the end of the day. Well, I think it's, there's two things. One is. It is easier now to start a company than at any other time in human history. The resources are there. You, can, you really, truly can do it in your garage or in your apartment, um, even as a college kid. Um, but my advice would be solve a big problem. Solve a hard problem. I, I run across companies every day with kids that are starting something that's another way to find a, you know, where your friends are to go do something at, at, at night. And I always wonder, is it really that hard to find things to do? Do you really need an application to do that? Um, solve a hard problem. Solve something that no one else is tackling or no one else has been able to solve. That's really where the value is. Right now, I have no backup plan. And as a former military pilot that's used to having, you know, at one point flying in an ejection seat and always having a backup plan, uh, I don't have a backup plan here. But I think that's the right way to do this. I think it was uh, LinkedIn's Reid Hoffman, who I think it's his quote that said, being an entrepreneur is like jumping off a cliff and then building an airplane on the way down as both a pilot and an entrepreneur. That resonates with me. And I think that's right. You've got to jump off the cliff. If you've got one foot in the door and one foot out, you're going to do it halfway. And you just simply cannot have a backup plan. Well, my first job was, um, was I had a lawn cutting business when I was uh, in about the sixth grade. So I started cutting. I lived in a typical suburban neighborhood and cut lawns on the weekends in the summer. Um, and I, uh, I just started doing it and started doing it for more lawns. And more people said, hey, come over and cut my lawn. I made five bucks a lawn. And I usually hope for a tip that would get me to 10 bucks. Um, but what was interesting about it was suddenly I had more money than all of my friends. So they said, hey, how do we get to be a part of this? And I said, look, you cut the lawn. And for, you know, for $8, I'll give you $8 and I'll take two. So that was sort of my first. Um, my first foray into entrepreneurship. Um, it was a time I'd cut a lawn, and you know the little grass bag catcher, the grass catcher in the bag, um, it was broken. And I talked to the guy who was cutting his lawn. I said, look, it's broken. And he said, don't, don't worry about it. Just shoot the grass all out on, on the lawn. And I finished cutting the lawn and went home. And I remember I was playing football in the backyard with some of the neighborhood kids. And uh, my dad pulled up in the car and said, get in the car and bring a rake. 
And we went over there and it didn't matter how many times I said, but dad, he said it doesn't matter. We got there and the lawn looked terrible and he was right and he made me rake it up and said, any job worth doing is worth doing right. It doesn't matter whether your grass catcher wasn't working. It looks terrible. He paid you. Fix it. I think that was probably a pretty important lesson. We try to do this job right.